All right, class, so this is next video in the series. So we're going to import our FBX model into Substance Painter and bake our meshes. And then you guys can go crazy um, painting in Substance Painter. Let's get started. Okay, so I have Substance Painter opened up. I'm going to go to File and New. Now for my template, there are a ton of different options, but I want you to choose PBR, so that's um, PBR Metallic Roughness, and I like having an alpha blend in there just in case you have some transparency in your models. For file, you're going to select your model, so whatever the latest FBX you created is. For document resolution, this will be the size of your textures. So if you have a strong computer, I recommend doing 4K textures. Um, but if your computer is really struggling, you can do 1024 or 2048. Normal map format is determined by whether you're using your model for Unreal Engine or for Unity. So DirectX is for Unreal Engine, and then you have to compute tangent space per fragment. If you'd like to use Unity, do OpenGL and leave this setting off. Since I like Unreal Engine more, I'm going to do these two settings. For UV tile settings, um, I'm going to stick with the new UV tile workflow. This um, creates UV tile or UDIMs where you can paint across the texture sets. Because the, the way that we created our um, meshes, it won't really matter right now, but um, might as well stick with this one. Uh, import cameras is fine. If you ever want to try to have Substance auto unwrap your model, you can do it here too. So that would save you being in another program, but I haven't found it to be the best. Okay. So once all, that's all good, let's hit OK, and we will see our texture sets. So one thing between the last tutorial and this one, I did have to fix my straps and put them on their own UDIM tile. There we go. Okay, so on the left we have our 3D model. On the right we have whichever texture set um, UV tile is active. So I have my base. Here is my details, my tummy and my straps on separate slide. Um, now the first thing we need to do when we get in here is bake our textures. So the sample model we did before had its textures already baked, but for us, we will need to do the, our own. So I'm gonna go down to the texture set settings. So not layers, but texture sets. Scroll down until you see your mesh maps. And all we have to do is hit bake mesh maps. For our baking, we're gonna put output size. I'm gonna do 4K, but you could do 2048. Um, there's anti-aliasing options. I'm gonna select subsampling eight by eight. If we had low and poly, high poly meshes, we would um, designate them with the underscore low or underscore high here. Oh, and that reminds me, we need to cl um, click use low poly mesh as a high poly mesh. So since we only have one mesh from ZBrush, um, we're going to use our low poly or our poly mesh as a high poly mesh. If you had a low poly version and a high poly version, you would include the high poly here and use the low poly as your actual model that you brought in. Okay, so we're gonna bake our normals, our world space normals, our IDs, our ambient occlusion. A couple things to note for here, if you would like to up the quality of your ambient occlusion, you can increase these secondary rays. 64 is pretty nice. Self occlusion is another one that folks um, will change. And you can select only same mesh name for self occlusion or you can allow all of the parts of the mesh to um, occlude each other. Uh, curvature, if you want um, thinner, sharper lines in your curvature maps, you would remove or turn this down. But I'm just gonna leave it at normal setting. 
again with the self-intersecting options. Position, I don't think there's anything here. And then finally, thickness, you also have that option for self, uh, secondary rays and um, self-occlusion. All right, so let's just select bake. This is going to take quite some time, so I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, so I just finished baking. You can see all of the texture sets over here. There might have been a problem with some of these. Um, you can also, if you're in your 3D window, so let me switch to 3D only. If you press B, you can scroll through and see all of the maps. So this is up here. See, this is the ID. This is the ambient occlusion. I think this one has the most issues. I would probably want to go back and try and figure out what's happening with this paper and with these clasps. Um, if I was working on this for a project. Um, but for right now, we're going to just hold on to it. Curvature, you can see where there's most curves. It's on those edges. Um, position just goes from top to bottom, left to right. Thickness, it does kind of show where things are thicker. So like this nose is quite thick, that kind of thing. And our normals, you can definitely see some issues on these normals and world space normals. And now we're back to ID. If you want to see everything, you press M or go to your lighting and material. So now that we're good on these, I'm just gonna go and create one material for my backpack base. And um, just like we did in class. So add a fill layer, oops. This one will be my base color. Change the color to, I think it, mine is kind of like a brownish red somewhere around here and I can pull up my here we go and actually I got pretty darn close maybe a tiny bit more red there we go uh, add another fill layer this will be the ambient occlusion layer right click on that layer add a black mask right click on that add a generator for the generator, select the ambient occlusion. Um, global invert, I can't remember if it was false or true. I'm going to go with true for right now. Click on this, and for my base color, I'm going to pick something somewhat complementary. Um, I'm thinking more just like a, a bright orange or something, kind of a So I don't really want to go too dark with this. I could go somewhat more green. Maybe more, I'm thinking more orange. I just kind of like orange in general though. Okay. I could also turn this to a multiply. Okay, add a new fill layer. Let's call this edgeware or yeah, edgeware, edge highlights. Right click on it, add a black mask. Right click on it, add a generator. That generator should be the curvature map. And for this, I'm going to pick a base color that's somewhat like my main base color and then kind of scale it back a little bit so it looks more worn. Here's another area I'm not particularly fond of this model, this kind of, I don't know. Something's going on between these two, but that's okay. Keep moving, nothing's perfect. Um, add another fill layer, and for this last one, um, let's do a position slash gradient. So right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator. This generator will be the position. Um, I think global infert was true. But let's see, and then change our color for this one. 
I'm thinking more of that dark orange again. And set this one also on multiply. So it's going to have that gradient light to dark. Again, for your generators, you can go and change your global balance. So this will change how much or how little we're getting of that gradient. So I'm just maybe do a little less um, global blur. And then don't forget that these blending modes really do add a lot. So you can, um, you know, select overlay or screen or soft light depending on the effect that you want. So I'm just going to do normal for now. Last thing we want is to add a, um, a filter. So that stylized light filter. So I'm going to add a new layer, right click on it, add a filter. Under filter, we're going to select the bake lighting stylized. And this one was soft light. There we go. So again, I would definitely want to go through and make some changes to these. Let's just turn them all back on. Um, but that's a good start. I would suggest that you add a stylized base material to all of your layers first, and then you can start adding things um, like smart materials on top. But I do get a good feeling about um, starting with stylized and then moving on. All right, hope that helps.